Hi, I'm Bob German, and this video is Building a Conversational Bot for Microsoft Teams, Part 3, Adaptive Cards. This video will show you how to build a bot that takes commands using natural language and interacts with the user using adaptive cards instead of a continued back and forth dialogue. I'll show you how to use an adaptive card to capture information within a bot dialogue. I'll also show you how to access the team roster using Bot Builder SDK 4.6 or greater. And I'll show you how to update an adaptive card that's already been posted in the Teams conversation. So let's dive in. So Teams supports different kinds of conversations. You can have multi-person conversations in Teams channels or group chat, or you can have one-on-one -on -one conversations. And in the case of a bot, that really allows a lot more complex back and forth dialogue between the user and the bot. If multiple people are involved, you want to limit the number of back and forth interactions and make sure that users don't get confused by the threading in Teams conversations. A great way to do this is with adaptive cards, and that's the subject of this video. Now recall also <clears throat> that uh, Lewis is a great way to get started for your bot to take something that the user has typed and interpret it. And Lewis will give us back an intent and some entities like add Alice to the Contoso project. The intent is to add someone to a project and Alice and Contoso are the entities that we need to, um, to actually carry out that action. Ultimately, we're trying to build up the request information on the right, the project ID, the person being added, the role that they're going to take, and uh, three months of forecasted hours so that we can budget for their work. Now, um, Lewis isn't going to give us that back perfectly, but we want to take as much as we can from what Lewis said, and similar to the conversational bot example, um, we're going to refine it using a dialogue that's going to prompt for any missing entities and resolve and disambiguate the entities. The difference is in this case, I'll use adaptive cards instead of natural language conversation to do the disambiguation and the prompting. So let's look at an example. Um, we're going to go to the consulting bot and say add Alice to Contoso and we get back an adaptive card. So it actually figured out uh, some of the information. It figured out that Contoso was the client name and that Alice uh, is the name of the consultant and but there are two Alice's on our team so I can now disambiguate that here on the card and there are two Contoso projects so I can pick the right one and then also easily capture all the other information that I need. Now, the user here isn't going to get confused by threading or having to at mention the consulting bot. All I have to do is click submit and the job is done. And the whole team can see what happened because the form has been replaced with a little confirmation card saying, hey, Alice is joining our project and here's how many hours she'll have available. So let's do a code walkthrough. And you can get the code at https aka.ms slash consulting bot. Also, here are a couple of other videos that I'm assuming that you've watched and understood before you'll really understand this, uh, this code walkthrough. So before we look at the code, let's review what we saw in the demo. There were two turns and two adaptive cards. The first turn was when I typed add Alice to Contoso, and the bot responded with the first card, which was a form for me to fill out, that disambiguated my request and let the bot know which Alice and which Contoso project I wanted, as well as capturing some more information that probably would have been tedious to type in natural language uh, responses. Then, so that was the first turn. When I submitted that uh, form, that little card, um, that began the second turn. It sent an invoke activity back to the bot, which then took the information that I had selected, uh, added Alice to the project, and responded with a second card. And it updated, and I'll show you the code for this, it updated the first card and replaced it with the second card so that it would sort of confirm it and not create a confusing situation with perhaps multiple people submitting different things to the bot. 
Okay, so let's kind of trace through the code. So it begins here in the bot controller. So this is um, sort of a, a standard MVC web API uh, type of thing. And it's going to get past um, the bot adapter and the bot at, as through dependency injection. And as soon as it sees a post here at API slash messages, that's where that's been coming from uh, in some of the other demos, it's going to call the adapter and pass in the bot along with the HTTP request and response object. So then the adapter is going to now turn that into something that the bot can understand. So here's my bot and it implements, uh, let's see, it inherits from Teams Activity Handler, which means that it is handling activities from the bot channel service and it is aware of Microsoft Teams, which is important, of course. So inside of our bot, uh, we're going to override a method called onTurnAsync. This gets fired every time a new turn begins. Um, and so this is what's going to get called when the controller gets that message um, from my first turn. Now in this case, I'm going to let the base class take care of most of the details. And that's going to uh, call quite a number of different overrides depending on what the activity uh, is that's beginning the turn. And then it's going to save away our state so that we don't so that we can save our dialogue state uh, from any dialogues that have run inside the bot. This first uh, utterance was add Alice to Contoso, and so that's a message. So on message activity async ran. And so I ran my dialogue. And uh, here's the main dialogue. And um, as you can see, I'm going to add a few um, child dialogues that I can use inside of here. Uh, the add to project dialog, build a project, and the waterfall that actually makes this one work. This waterfall is going to begin by checking and make sure, making sure that Lewis is set up. And if it is, which it was during the demo, it's going to call Lewis and figure out what the intent was. Now remember that my um, Lewis project recognizer, this is uh, something I demoed in an earlier video, it's going to try to get as much information as it can and um, put it into a request uh, details object um, so that I can disambiguate that in my dialog and eventually get enough information to update the backend database. So if, um, if Lewis comes back and I can't even tell what the intent is, then I'm going to fall through and give a generic response using Q&A Maker. But let's assume here that it figured out that we're trying to add somebody to a project. So then it will begin the Add to Project dialog. Now keep in mind, we're still in the same turn. We're still in that same first turn as we come down here. And now we're at the first step of the Add to Project dialog, which is another waterfall dialog. This little scheme will only work if we have a project name. So if the user didn't even type a project name or Lewis wasn't able to um, figure out that there was a project name in the utterance, then we're going to prompt again and again for that um, until we finally get a project that we can resolve against our project database. So we're going to try to, whatever the user, um, whatever came back from Lewis, um, or whatever is going to be retried here uh, using this retry prompt, right? We're going to go in and uh, try to resolve that. And uh, when we finally get a project that is in the database or that matches something in the database, then we'll display the add to project card. So um, what this does is I've got a little card class over here. Um, Actually, before I call that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a final list of projects uh, <clears throat> that match the uh, best guess I have at a project name. And so it might be the client name or something else. In this case, I type the client name. But resolve project, I'm not going to show you that. It's just this is calling the backend database. And it's going to look in multiple fields for this project name and return as best as it can a list of consulting projects, which is part of my data model. And resolve person is going to try to resolve the person name who I typed. And I'll show you that because um, it's kind of interesting because it actually pulls the people out of Microsoft Teams. So this is going to return a, a list of 
person objects where that's also part of my data model, person. And the way it's going to do it is it's going to go to teamsinfo.getmembersasync. So there's other uh, things you can get here out of Teams Info. This is the bot uh, SDK knowing fully about the team that it's running in, which is really cool that it's all done by this one SDK. So I get back a list of members and uh, lowercase them and I look for any matches between what the user typed and the members in the team. So if you remember I said add Alice and there were a couple of options for Alice because uh, we had two different people named Alice on the team. And I also typed Contoso and there were two different projects uh, that were uh, from Contoso as the client. So that's how my card really got um, multiple choices for the project and multiple choices for the person. It was refined down as best we could from what the user typed originally. Now I'm going to call, um, I'm going to go to my own class called Add to Project Card. Now this is where we're sort of leaving the, the sort of standard design pattern that comes. Um, in my case, I started with the core bot a long while back. Um, and we're leaving the, the, the normal dialogue flow and going into, I guess, I'll just say that you may come up with a better way of factoring this. Um, I just decided that cards should be uh, encapsulated in a class. So that's the way I did it here. And you'll see that in my pattern here, which you can copy or not. Um, what I did was I made a unique constant for the submission ID so that when somebody submits the card, I can tell which card got submitted. And then um, I'm going to use the adaptive card uh, SDK to build up this card. So um, I've put the template into, an, into a resource uh, inside of um, .NET. So it comes in here as a resource stream. And here is the add to project card template. right? And so you can play with this inside of the um, adaptive card designer and get it to look the way you want by just putting in uh, the data which is that same data model of the project request uh, or the consulting request details. So I'll go ahead and bind that. Before I did that I had to figure out what is for the forecast of the next three months. I had to go actually compute um, and I won't bore you with this code but it's just kind of crunching through uh, a little bit of calendar arithmetic to figure out what are the next three months. So I could put that into the form and there's my data and I'm going to call the adaptive transformer and um, line 36 binds the uh, data. So that's my same consulting uh, request details that we've been working with uh, also in the uh, conversational bot. Same, same data structure. It's going to bind that into the template give me back an adaptive card that I can return. So the add to project dialog gets that bot, creates a reply to um, from my turn context. So the, the add Alice to Contoso um, message, I'm now making a reply to that, adding the project card as an attachment and um, sending that off um, back to the user. And at this point, the turn will end. So that's the first turn. Now the second turn is when I submitted the filled in card. And so that's actually going to come back um, here in the bot because that's going to come in as an invoke activity. And the, um, the bot SDK is smart enough to know different kinds of invoke activities. And so this will get dispatched instead of the on message. Um, <clears throat> this is going to get uh, dispatched to the card action invoke. So that's what it was. When I clicked that button, it was a card action. So I'm going to go ahead and take the data that I got out of there um, that I got passed in that activity. And I'm going to um, check and see what which card it is that submitted um, something. And this is where if I had multiple cards in my solution, I would have to build my own little dispatcher here to figure out which card it was that I was getting um, a, a card action from. In this case, I'm going to be a nice doobie and good programmer, hopefully, and check and make sure that not, not just going to assume that this is my card. I will check that. And um, if it works, I'm going to actually return 
this, uh, whatever the card itself passes in. So again, this is my little pattern for doing it, but I wanted to encapsulate the card rendering and the submit logic. So I'm going to go back to that same static class for the add to project card and let it decide how to respond to somebody clicking uh, on the button. So let's come back here and look at this on submit method. And it'll do a little checking, you know, let's make sure it really is a submit. And I'm going to get uh, now the confirmation card and, uh, and fill that. And there's a, uh, so the same pattern here for the confirmation card, right? Here's the template JSON and here's its class. And so get card async for, for that one is a little bit simpler. Um, it's just going to take the data that it got back uh, from the first card and bind that to the template. And that's how I made the confirmation card. It'll return the adaptive card object. And um, then I can just add that, uh, make a reply uh, and add the card uh, as an attachment to the reply. And, uh, you know, somewhere in here, I would update the database if this was a real example. My, my demo doesn't actually update a database. It's just mocked up data. But um, I think you can hopefully follow how you would build this sort of thing uh, with real data, um, updating it. At, you know, at, after the user submitted. Notice that by calling uh, on line 52 update activity async instead of uh, send activity async, that will replace the old card with the confirmation card. Thanks for watching this Microsoft 365 Patterns and Practices video. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Patterns and Practices YouTube channel at aka.ms slash spnp videos. I'm Bob German. You can follow me on Twitter at Bob1German, and please check out my blog at Bob1German.com. That's all for this time, and thanks for watching.